Here in a few moments, we're going to show you how to change the electrical portion of your ignition, which for whatever reason, I'm going to mistakenly refer to as the ignition control module, and I have no idea why. So my name's Clay with the Clayway here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And before we get going with the video, I wanted to show you some stuff that you can check to see if the electrical portion of your ignition is defective in your truck. And this is a very, very telltale sign because the electrical portion of the ignition controls so many functions in the truck. It turns the computer on, it turns the ignition on, it sends power to a bunch of different components that are necessary for the everyday operation of your engine. Now, this information may not be pertinent to you, but think about the people that are broke down on the side of the road that need this. It's only a minute or two long. You may learn something that you did not know. We wanna take a test light, open up the hood, open up the fuse box, connect our test light to the negative side of the battery. Now we wanna test for battery voltage at our PCM fuse. We're gonna look for ECM1 here on our label diagram. The ECM1 with the key turned on should always have battery power. With the key turned on, both sides of the fuses should have battery power. And it does on both sides. What would happen before when she cranked the vehicle over, it would lose battery voltage on that fuse right there. Now, if that's the situation with yours, we could simply jump a wire from here to here and supply battery voltage to this fuse right here. And in my situation, the ignition switch getting hot on the inside, even though I couldn't tell, dropping out 12 volt power supply. Now, of course, you would have to know if that fuse has power or not. But if you go down to a local parts store and you spend five or 10 bucks on a test light, you test that power and it doesn't have power while it's cranking, then you would know you could just run a wire from something that always has power, like this, that's even with the key off, we could take a jumper wire and energize that system. Now, the reason that that's not the best way to do it is because whatever is broken in this situation, which happens to be the electrical portion of the ignition, it's possible that there's a wire broken somewhere else and that could be grounded out to this system and then that could cause big problems. But more than likely, 99% of the time, we're gonna to come to the conclusion that the ignition switch is bad in this vehicle. That means that we have an intermittent failure and intermittent failures are often the hardest thing to find because sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work. So today, inspire and empower you to do this job yourself. And we're gonna show you how to change this ignition module out of your Chevy S10 Blazer, Chevy pickup truck, GMC Envoy, blah, 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 from the early 2000s, late 2000s, late 1990s, early 2000s, pretty easy. Got a couple things you need right here. So we're gonna need a couple of little things, Not nothing too particular, I don't think. I need a seven millimeter, a couple of extensions, 10 millimeter, some wire cutters, some zip ties, a Torx T25, and either an E5, for this little special bolt that's held up inside there or a 5 30 second socket we'll take the little hidden screw off and the top cover off we're going to disconnect the battery even though i don't really think it's necessary some of you might get scared and i don't want you to get scared because you've never done this job just keep in mind the whole time you're doing it if anyone else can do it i promise you you can do it too oh 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 and i took the old ignition module apart and was gonna try to fix it because normally like there's little little like uh, copper pathways that this thing works on. I was assuming because this switch wouldn't send power to the car and it wouldn't stay running or it wouldn't start and it broke down on the side of the road that I might be able to repair it because these things are kind of pricey. But uh, I like to repair things on my channel in this situation. Eh, that's not gonna be repaired. I already had the new part and that's kind of, you know, helps out. Oh, 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 oh. I almost forgot. Probably not going to use this today, but you should always keep a lighter in your pocket in case you have to burn something down. So let's get going with this video. Now we're going to move our seat all the way back, put our steering column all the way up if it's tilt steering. Along the bottom edge, we're going to have four seven millimeter screws that need to be removed, one up here by the firewall as well. Now you can pull the panel out and there are going to be two screws holding on your OBD2 connector. You can unscrew that. 
if you have this little box here, you can undo the clip and pop that up and unplug it. We want to disconnect the brake cable here that's hooked up to the emergency brake. So we quite simply push in on that. We push this forward. We should be able to pick that little cable up out of that little holder right there, just like that. Move it down and then we'll pop this cable out of the bracket here. Now taking a flathead screwdriver, we quite simply pop that out. This could have been done in reverse order. Down here on the bottom, there's another seven millimeter bolt that was exposed. Now we have two bolts on each side that hold the kick panel up there. And then on each end, there's two clips. In addition to these two bolts, there's also two more bolts right here and right here. Taking our fingernails and putting them underneath there, we should be able to pull the kick panel out. Now with all four bolts removed, we should be able to fish our parking brake cable through this hole right here and pull our kick panel out of the way. Now we wanna take the four 10 millimeter nuts that are holding on this brace bar right here and remove the brace bar entirely. With the little man jiggling, that thing will come right out. Now at this point, looking up underneath here, you're probably like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of wires. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. And just keep in mind that if anybody else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. So we're gonna take and cut a couple of these zip ties right here. And we're gonna undo this main electrical connector that is held in by a seven millimeter bolt. Make sure when you reinstall this to tighten the bolt down correctly. Even though it's not necessary to undo the airbag module, I'm gonna undo it anyways. You don't have anything to fear, just make sure you undo this with the battery unplugged and plug it back in before the battery is connected. I was able to push down on this and pull back on the wires as I did that and it came right out. Now in the center of this large connector right here is a seven millimeter screw. We're gonna unscrew that screw and it should come right out. Now I'm cutting most of the zip ties, but this particular tie I'm not gonna cut. I actually pushed it forward through there, collapsed the little loop so I could pull it back through. We can reuse that later. Now we can just take a miniature screw and we're gonna separate these three portions of the electrical port connector right here. Each side works the same. We just take a screwdriver. When you stick your screwdriver in there, it's gonna allow you to slide this forward and down and out. This little nub hangs up in that little pocket right there. So once you move that away, that allows you to pull it down on both sides. Now we have two T25 screws that need to be removed, lower portion of the steering column. Before we can remove the lower portion of the steering column, we need to pull this off. Sometimes it will just quite simply pull off, but sometimes we have to get a screwdriver and pry behind it. Pew! Whoops, I can't know my own strength. Well, that didn't hurt it at all, so there's always that. Now this cover is gonna sweep down right here in the front and it hooks in the back with some little hooks right there. Just a tiny little bit of man jingling, that thing will come right off. Couple more zip ties to cut underneath here. Now up in here, there is one little screw right there and that's that E5. Now I'm gonna try to grab another socket and see if I can get on that with something smaller so maybe it's something you all have at home. Now that should allow us to drop our steering column down by quite simply pushing on our release cape right here and pulling the top bezel off. Now we need to remove the security by pushing on this tab right there and pulling up on it. Now we need to remove our key chime indicator. And how we do that is we take a pick tool, put it down inside there and then spin it clockwise as we push it towards the one o'clock position to remove it. Once we have the key indicator removed, we're gonna move down to the ignition cylinder and start removing the electrical portion. On each side of this, there's little clips that hold this plug inside here. So we gotta take a pick tool and put it in there and you would put one on each side if you were removing this without disassembling the whole 
steering column or you weren't replacing it, but I'm not too worried about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the pick tool up in there, get one side down, then put the pick tool in there and then pull the other side down, which should allow me to slide the whole cartridge out of there. First, I'll release this side, pull down on it. Then I'll release that side, which will allow me to pull this out completely. Now, we notice that this notch is over here in the corner. So looking at it from this perspective, that's exactly how we need to reinstall it. That way it notches correctly because this is clocked to the vehicle. So we'll insert our key, turn our key backwards one, and then we'll insert our switch. Now we're gonna roll this switch all the way counter, all the way clockwise. So we have the two big notches right there. Then we quite simply insert the switch and click it into place, run our key indicator up through its pathway, click it into the top and plug in our security lock. By the way, if you have a security problem, replacing this switch more than likely is not going to repair that. I can't say for certain, but I believe up inside here, there's some metal disc that wear out during the course of this key installation. And that's why sometimes you have the security light on. The reason that these switches and that security light comes on is because you're constantly turning that key on and over several thousand times, you're gonna have problems. If you ever have a security light on in one of these and the vehicle won't start, turn the key on for 10 minutes, turn it off for 15 seconds, turn it back on for 10 minutes, turn it off for 15 seconds, then turn it back on for 10 more minutes. Even in the on position, it should start up because the security light will be off. If it doesn't go off, then that means the wires are internally broken inside the ignition itself and the whole ignition needs to be replaced, which would probably mean you need a steering column as you have the security light on. Now, when we insert our key chime, we're gonna push it down and then spin it counterclockwise and snap it into place, plug in our security, and we're good to go. Now, with your wires facing up at the top, the large bulk of them coming out right there, your black one goes on the left side and your blue one, gray one goes on the right side. We snap them together, and if you remember correctly, they push forward and go back through here. Now we can screw down our seven millimeter once we have this connected, connect our battery and check and make sure that our vehicle starts now. It's crucial not to over tighten this screw. You can just tighten it by hand with a little quarter inch ratchet. We also wanna make sure that if you disconnected your airbag, you plug that in before you put your battery together. Now you wanna be careful and mindful not to bend any of the posts that this goes in here. So when you go to put this up inside here, make sure you gently do it. You don't have to ram it in there because without your screw being screwed in, it's not gonna screw up in there very easily. And you do not have to over torque this. You can hand tighten this without a ratchet. It only probably requires like two or three foot pounds at most. Now I highly doubt that I did anything wrong, but you never know, so. I want to check and make sure everything starts up. My security light's not flashing. It starts up and runs great. So now we can put it back together, eh, mate? whoop -a! Now the vehicle's doing something that it never did, which was start. It wouldn't start without me jumping the circuit to make it start. But that wasn't the end of my problems. I actually had a bad ignition coil module on this, which would allow it to run but not give enough spark to go anywhere. So I ended up having to fix that one, but that's in my video of different things that can happen with S10s. My name's Clay with the Clayway, and I believe my job here on YouTube is to inspire and empower folks just like you to do things yourself. If you found this video useful, entertaining, turn down the volume at nighttime, put on my sweet Clayway trip tips and tricks playlist, let them suckers play. It helps the video tremendously. And if you watched this part, you probably watched the whole video. But if you don't watch my whole videos and you just skip to the part that you need while you're working on your stuff, turn the volume down. Restart the video and let that sucker play. Then that way, at least I make my two tenths of a cent, eh? If you have a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I can't help you with your baby mama drama, but I may be able to help you fix that whip. 
Remember, no matter what it is in life, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them. Be the absolute first of you. Hit that subscribe button. Send them thumbs up. Push that join button if you like what I'm doing and you'd like to see me do more. God bless, folks. Have the absolute best of days.